All right, Isaac Wade, Doctor of Pharmacy. Let's talk about mirtazapine. Mirtazapine, this is one of my all-time favorite molecules, and it's a type of antidepressant that's unlike any of the other antidepressants on the market. On one hand, this makes mirtazapine a really useful solution for a lot of individuals, but on the other hand, there are some unique side effects to consider. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down all of the information that I think you should know about mirtazapine so that you can make a more informed decision about your health. As always, I'll be talking about how it works, I'll be talking about what kind of side effects to expect, and I'll be talking about how it compares to other types of antidepressants. So without further ado, let's get into the video. As always, this video is not medical advice, this video is for informational purposes only. Always speak with your healthcare provider before making any changes to any of your medications. Mirtazapine is usually used for depression, but it can also be used for anxiety, PTSD, obsessive compulsive disorder, and insomnia as well. The mechanism of action of mirtazapine is very complicated, but essentially it blocks receptors. It blocks certain serotonin receptors, it blocks the alpha-2 adrenergic receptor, and it also blocks the histamine H1 receptor. If you're interested in learning more about the mechanism of action of mirtazapine, I've linked an interesting paper in the description below. In terms of administration, mirtazapine is taken once per day at bedtime because it is very sedating. Mirtazapine can be taken with or without food, it honestly doesn't matter, but if you're taking the orally disintegrating tablet, make sure to leave the tablet in the foil until you're ready to take it. If the tablet is outside of the foil wrap, it is not going to be stable for a very long time. In terms of dosage, most people start at a dose of about 15 milligrams and increase their dose slowly to a maximum dose of 45 milligrams. If you plan on discontinuing mirtazapine, make sure to taper off the medication slowly over a couple of weeks because there is a pretty nasty discontinuation syndrome that is associated with this agent. In terms of onset, like other antidepressants, mirtazapine doesn't start working right away. You're gonna have to wait a couple of weeks for the effects of mirtazapine to kick in. However, side effects might appear before the beneficial effects occur. Just like any other drug, mirtazapine has the potential of causing side effects. Some of the most common side effects associated with mirtazapine include weight gain, fatigue, dry mouth, constipation, and drowsiness. Drowsiness occurs in almost everyone who takes mirtazapine, and on one hand, it can help you with sleep, like if you're an individual with depression and insomnia, drowsiness might actually be a good thing, but on the other hand, you gotta be careful if you're gonna be driving, if you're gonna be using heavy machinery, or if you're going to be combining mirtazapine with other types of sedating drugs like alcohol and cannabis. Weight gain is a really big side effect that's caused by mirtazapine, and it seems to happen at a really, really high frequency. In fact, one study found that mirtazapine caused weight gain in up to 77% of individuals that use the medication over the long term. Mirtazapine causes a whole bunch of other side effects. I'm just going to flash them on the screen for you now so that you can take a look and then we can move on. There are some side effects that are caused by other antidepressants that mirtazapine doesn't seem to cause. One of them includes nausea and vomiting. It doesn't seem to cause that. And another side effect includes uh, sexual dysfunction. It doesn't seem to cause that either. In terms of more serious side effects, mirtazapine, like other types of antidepressants, can increase suicidal ideation. And this is especially prevalent in young adults and also in uh, youth as well. So if you fall into that age category, just make sure that you are being monitored while you are taking mirtazapine. You should also be aware of the serotonin syndrome, which is a uh, serotonin toxicity that can also be caused by mirtazapine. It's more common if you're combining uh, mirtazapine with other types of serotonergic drugs like amphetamine, like cocaine, like MDMA. So just if you're going to combine mirtazapine with any other types of agents, just make sure that you talk to your healthcare provider before doing that. Now there's like a million other things I could talk about. Um, if you want to learn more about mirtazapine, I've linked the product monograph in the description box below. So I'd encourage you to take a look at that. So we talked about some of the general properties of mirtazapine, but how does mirtazapine compare to other antidepressants? Like I said before, it's really difficult to compare certain drugs if they're being studied in different trials. Um, however, if you were to do so, the best way to do it would be to do a network meta-analysis. And these are results that I'm going to show you right now that were from a network meta-analysis. In terms of efficacy and depression, you can see how mirtazapine 
compares to some of the other antidepressants in this graph here. And this graph being higher up on the graph is associated with better efficacy compared to being lower on the graph. And in this study, efficacy was measured as how many individuals got a 50% reduction in depressive symptoms during an eight week period. You can see mirtazapine stacks up very favorably compared to the other antidepressants with only amitriptyline ranking higher than mirtazapine. Let's take a look at acceptability. In terms of acceptability in depression, you can see how mirtazapine compares to other types of antidepressants. Again, being higher up on this graph is better than being lower and acceptability is being measured as the dropout rates among individuals taking each of these antidepressants. You can see mirtazapine lands somewhere in the middle, and I'd like to point out that there's no difference between mirtazapine and placebo in terms of acceptability, which means that if you're taking mirtazapine, your chances of discontinuing mirtazapine due to side effects or due to lack of efficacy are just as much as your chances of discontinuing a placebo because of side effects or because of lack of efficacy. So that's all I have to talk about when it comes to mirtazapine. Um, again, really, really interesting antidepressant. In a future video, I'm probably going to be breaking mirtazapine down in terms of its mechanism of action. It's, you know, super interesting. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.